Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Between the Covers. My name is Bradley Shaw. Thank you for joining us this evening. Uh, today, we're talking to Paul Rushworth Brown, who has written a fabulous new book called Skullduggery. Thank you for joining us, Paul. How are you? Really well. Thank you, Bradley. It's great to be here. Good. Thank you. And thank you for writing such a wonderful book and allowing us to support you. I think it's fascinating. I think the, uh, the viewers and or readers will enjoy it as much as us. Could you, for those that haven't yet read it or heard of it, could you give us a snapshot on what the book's about? Um, it's, a, it's a set in, in the time of the English Reformation. There's a bit of love, a bit of adventure, a bit of mystery, um, a few twists and turns that people probably won't expect. Um, yeah, so it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's a very, um, I suppose, uh, I don't pull punches when I write, so it's very uh, um, historically accurate. Um, and one of the main reasons I wrote it was because, um, you know, there's been many books written about nobles and ladies and all that type of thing. So this is a story about, uh, you know, um, poppy holders on the moors of Yorkshire back in 1603. Um, it wouldn't have been a, a, an easy life. No, no. And did you have a, to do a lot of research for this sort of book? Like in that, so as you say, that period of time, was there a lot of reference material, good asset, good re like research ability? Is that the word? <laughs> months and months and months. Um, yep. No, and uh, um, I mean, that's, that's sort of like uh, one of the things that excites me about this novel is that, yep. um, you know, when I wrote it, it was actually like for me stepping back in time, seeing how those people actually lived. Yeah. And uh, you know, fictionalizing that um, that uh, that, this, that story as accurately as possible, um, yeah. and that's that's what's so exciting about the novel. Oh, fantastic! And did you find that uh, the characters were easy to write or evolve because of the research or of a period, but also gaining the understanding of that that research? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, I mean, Tom, Thomas Rushworth is actually um, one of the main characters. Is actually based on my great grandfather times ten. Yeah. So I suppose there's a, there's a little bit of uh, a little bit of me in him, yeah. Um, and then there's a, uh, a another character, John Hargreaves, which is which is a quite interesting character, with uh, I suppose uh, a few different dimensions. You know, he presents himself as like a, a bit of a larrikin, a drunk, yeah. Um, giving too much away, he, uh, yes, he becomes a, a, the hero of the story. Oh, fantastic, wonderful, and um, so. Tell us, like, what do you hope the readers gain out of this? Like, as you say, like, it's very, you know, uh, involved and, and, and authentic. But what do you hope the readers themselves gain out of it? What are you looking for? What are you excited about for them? Um, just it's, it's something different. Mm. You know, like, um, I mean, I love to start with fiction. It's it, but, you know, when you see some of the movies are, like, coming through, without sort of, like, uh, I suppose, putting you know, um, other writers, um, it, you know, down or anything like that. Um, it doesn't seem to be anything new coming coming across, yeah. you know. Yeah. And um, I think this is something different, something new. Um, it's it's something that will shock. It's something that it's something that you can uh, think about. Um, and Good. as you read it, um, you actually go, "Oh, wow! Wasn't expecting <laughs> that." It's one of those types of things. Awesome, awesome, well done. And so, did you find that it was uh, an energizing experience or an exhausting <laughs> experience to write this sort of book? Um, no, look, uh, uh, it's like for me writing historical fiction. It's like a, it's like an, a, an escape for me. Yep. When I write, it's like putting myself in 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 that character's position. Yeah, dealing with sort of like those day to day adventures and, and the mystery and and you know and uh, you know and, and also dealing with those those uh, the way that people actually live. Back mm. then, you know, it's, it's, um, and it's, so it's for me, yeah, it's it's it's, it's, it's an escapism. A lot of people uh, read to escape. I write. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, they always say, isn't there a saying that if you can't find the book you want to read, write it. Yeah. <laughs> Something. Like that. But um, so when you when you're um, writing and researching, how long do you add to say? I mean, give us an understanding of your writing process. So how many hours a day? What sort of time frame or line do you do it? Like, how do you structure yourself in your process of writing? Just a yeah. Fill us yeah. in on that. It took me a year to write and yeah, research. Wow. 
Um, and the way I write is probably a lot different to uh, to the way um, other authors write is because I actually don't do any planning. I don't. Yeah. Um, I just start writing, and people yeah. say, you know, what, you know, where does it come from? And I say, I don't know. <laughs> I, I just start writing, and then every once in a while, I get a get a, uh, uh, a bit of writer's block, and then something. I'll be walking along the street, and, some, and something will come to me up, and I'll go eureka, you know. Then I'll go back and yeah. start yeah. writing again, and then. Wow. So as we get to sort of like the um, end of the, the story, I actually sort of start changing things around a little bit. And yep. uh, hopefully all those um, movements, changes <laughs> and twists and turns are put in the right place. Yeah, well, that's good. That's good. So you said there you don't do um, a lot of planning. So that's interesting because, I mean, writing this book as, as having the authenticity of the history, you would have to do a lot of research. And when you're looking at how you're blending history with your fiction, um, did you approach that in any sort of way, or did you let the characters that you researched sort of tell you how, in fictional worlds, they may actually operate? Like, do you yeah, understand what I'm trying to say? I'm yeah, trying to yeah. sort of create. Yeah. I mean, the characters just sort of like, uh, I suppose, develop as the story goes on, and yeah. with researching and, and all that type of thing, you know, um, uh, you know, you can just sort of like, uh, I suppose, um, put the characters in certain situations. Yeah. In that historical context that. Like um, gives gives uh, the protagonist something that he has to work out. Yeah, you know? and obviously the antagonist is there, and he's sort of like um, causing issues, and yeah. But, but all of that, as I say, with the, with that uh, context of, yep. of um, you know the seventeenth century. Yeah, no, that's right, and that, that yeah, it's a very interesting period as well. Um, so there's a lot of I guess, meat to draw from, from some of the experiences you could create. Um, so with that too, did you um, find the process of writing, like your artistic process, um, what's the part that you find most challenging? So is it the creation of, the research of, the character development, or as you say, the putting it together or the editing? Like what's your, what's your challenging artistic part of the process for you? Well, I've written three novels mm. and um, when I, when I first wrote Skull Dugley, um, you know, that'd be like, what, that's three years ago now. Yeah. Um, the hardest thing for me was uh, um, the character development. Mm. And that's something you learned as you've written, yeah, now, as you've developed. Yeah. 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 And, and yeah. sort of like uh, going through Skull Dugley again and sort of like, um, uh, you know, as, as part of that sort of like editing process. You know, yeah. after writing my third book, I saw it went back to Skull Dugley and went, oh my God, it's terrible. <laughs> some of the pieces, yeah, some of the pieces didn't fit, yeah. 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 <laughs> so if they were alive today, what would they say to you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so um, for you too, like you say, you've written three books, um, you've, you've entered into the publishing process. What for you is, is literary success by, by your own interpretation? Every time somebody turn, turns around to me and they, they said, I've read your book, I love it, that's it. That's it there? Yep. Yeah. No, that, that's definitely a great compliment. Compliment is probably the best success anyone can have, I agree. Yeah. Um, so with that too, did you have any trouble writing the characters, even though they were authentic historical parts of what you researched, you still had to personalise them. You still had to you know, give them the energy and, and nuances that you needed in the story. And if I can ask too, what was the harder, if there was, a harder part for writing the opposite sex or writing as a, a male? So what did you find in that, when you talk about character development, what, what was your challenges there? I've got a good imagination. Yep. And, and I think that's what sort of like makes it quite easy for me. Mm -hmm. um, and let's face it, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm all, almost 60, so there's a lot yep. of, sort of like life experience in there. So uh, um, a lot of that character development might come from sort of like people that I've met, or but um, or, you know, um, in this particular story, there's some there's some really strong women in it. Yeah. You know, because back then, women had to be strong. Oh, for sure. Um, yeah. And you know, like some of the uh, research that I did with sort of like bucking schools and and the way women were treated and 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 that um, is sort of like a very I think a very strong part of the of the novel. Yeah, yeah. And did you find too that, that they were 
Um, did you represent any of them in people you know? Did you find influx? Did, was there any character in the book you made about yourself? Like you identify with yourself, you know, in, in more uh, ways? Not really, not really. No? But I think that there's probably bits and pieces of me in, mm. in all of them, even even in some of the female characters. I think yeah. there's uh, bits and pieces of, of, of my character in there. And yeah. also, you know, you, um, you know, you, uh, some characteristics of people that you've met or you've known for a long time, yeah. you might sort of like take bits. Of course, then, and, co- and create a create yeah. a, a mirage of or what's the word yeah. a, a collage of those personalities. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's good. Did you find it difficult to name your characters, or did you keep them authentic to their historical name? Their well, reference. Well, interestingly enough, um, most, some of the characters are actually named after my ancestors mm-hmm. because um, this this give you a little bit of background. About five years ago, I I wrote a a four hundred page. Um, family history i spent a year writing it and it was mainly for my kids i only got to like five printed and then about five years later i thought mm, that was quite fun doing that i might um you know take this in, in another direction and, and sort of like write a f- historical fictional novel um yeah. using my great grandfather times 10 and his family um <laughs> as 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 the characters yeah so thomas rushworth the the, um, the main character in the in the in the novel is actually one of my ancestors. Oh, and, yeah, which is fantastic. Yeah, and and uh, he was a copy holder. I've actually found um, a uh, document that I got from Kylie Library in Yorkshire, dating right back to 1590. And his name is actually on the on the Manor wow. Court Roll. That's fantastic. And uh, yeah, Manor Court Roll is actually play a, an integral part of the story of the novel. Part of it, anyway. Oh. Wow. So naturally, too, you say you work full time. Yeah. Um, and you were researching and writing. So, I mean, how many hours a day do you write or do you block a day out or do you have some time um, frame? How do you structure your time for writing? I'm a teacher, so um, mm-hmm. uh, if I'm, you know, if I'm marking that to you in the holidays, so I, I write then. Yep. I try to write after work, but I find it difficult. Um, yep. Uh, but Saturday, Sunday morning is probably the strongest, strongest time for me to write. That's where I'm yeah. just like uh, really motivated and uh, fresh and um yeah i i find it uh very um i'm really motivated to sort of, like sit down at the um at the computer and, and knock off uh, a couple of oh, good and and with that sort of commitment to the writing and to working how i have to ask of course is the support from the family and and, and also your balancing of of your passion and your work commitments and your family how do you how do you manage all that as well. um, uh, good question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when I wrote Skullduggery, um, my uh, my wife said, like, um, we were out with some friends, and my wife turned to me and said, you know, I haven't seen him for sort of like six months. He's been locked away in the in the in, in his <laughs> office writing his novel, right? But, um, so she she had to find something else to do. He's actually <laughs> yeah, doing a, doing a bit of study herself. Yeah. Yeah, I found um, I found I used to get busted when I used to lock myself away. I was like, "Oh, right, I'm going to take five hours. I need five hours today. Please, may I write?" So I go on write, and I'll be on Facebook, and then I get this little pop up in my messages saying, "You're not writing." <laughs> so yeah. it's like, "Stop tracking me." It's like I am writing. But anyway, it's quite funny. Like you actually, you know, getting that time away and getting that focus is paramount for anything. Yeah. Um, so, with um, that in mind, what when you're not writing because you're doing it in a way that you're working and you're writing as much as possible and trying to balance family. So what else do you do when you're not writing? How do you enjoy it? How do you relax yourself outside of all the things you're, you're doing? Um, right. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I do. That's what I do when I'm not at work because I, uh, I'm not at work uh, teaching or marking. Um, I suppose, you know, taking freedom, my dog for a walk, that's uh, that's another yeah. way to relax. Uh, uh, my wife Claire and I are, um, are avid walkers, so we do quite a lot of walking around the bay yeah. um, in, in Sydney. Um, but uh, yeah, um, riding is sort of like, um, you know, I just love it. Yeah. So uh, on that note, when did you decide you were first wanted to write? When did you, do you remember consciously, you know, were you six years old, 16, 26? Like when was the incubus? When did you think, oh, I, I want to write, I want to do this? Um, that's a good question. Um, as I said, I, I think it came from uh, writing that uh, family history, mm-hmm. and the reason I, I originally wrote that was because um, my father never knew much about his um, his uh, 
his his sort of like parents and their parents. Yeah. And I thought getting to the ripe old age of uh, you know, it was about um, 50, I thought if anything happens to me, my kids yeah. are never going to know, know, you know, who they are, where they came from, all that yeah. type of thing. That's why I originally wrote about family history. And, yeah. then, and then that just sort of like flowed on to writing yeah. Skullduggery. Um, you know, five years later, it was just like a, oh, I might write a novel. Yeah, and, wow. Um, it, and uh, I'm really pleased. Yeah. So you were more mature when you sort of took the commitment yeah. to writing. So, yeah. yeah. So I assume your kids would have been older, your time would have been a little bit more freer. Yeah. Careers yeah. established. Yeah. yeah. So so it's good that you were able to find that, that niche at that time too. I think yeah. a lot of people I talk to usually have that younger uh, desire, but then they put it off with family, with work, with things yeah. happening in life until yeah. later on as well. So that's yeah. good that, that you uh, got to enjoy it later. I think you yeah. write better too when you're older. I think you have that maturity yeah. that you can actually see it better. Yeah. Um, so do you have any suggestions too to, to share your experiences being, you know, uh, an older and wiser writer now? Um, what would you say to someone starting up or looking at the process of writing? Be very patient. Mm. Enjoy the ride. Um, don't be too hard on yourself. That's a good um, one. Yeah, definitely. So many people and, are critical. And uh, um, I suppose for me, I don't, I don't like, uh, I think it's important that uh, have a good reason for writing. Mm. Um, I, I mean, as I said before, the main reason I started writing was from children. Mm. And if other people sort of like like my novels, um, even if they don't like them, the legacy and the I suppose the stories are still there for my kids. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So there's a lot of, you've got to be personal. I think it's not about just as you say, it's not about being famous and rich. It's about being, I think, personable and building your own identity as a, as a person, as an author uh, yeah. and creating a small readership, if not a larger readership that grows yeah. organically. Uh, I think that's healthy. Um, not having expectations is important. Yeah, for it, 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 yeah. it takes so long as well. It takes so long, yeah. you know, like um, so long to like build up that, uh, I suppose, you know, that, group of people that love you love your writing love your novels yeah. and but um, every, as i say every time um you know one person says oh i just purchased your book read it loved it um yeah that's that's why i keep going that's good that's good and you hear from readers a lot you, you get a lot of feedback yeah i do yeah. you gain that good yeah i've got a pretty good following on um, on facebook and on, on social media <laughs> um, and uh of course i've got my own website now so good well done and yes just to everyone watching, make sure you do grab Paul uh, Rushworth Brown's new book, Skullduggery. It's available everywhere as we're talking in pre-sale. And then of course, I'm hoping that it'll be, uh, by the time you watch this, it'll also maybe be launched. But um, yeah, moving on to that, tell us more about your future books. What are your plans? What do you got coming up for readers to enjoy? Um, well, I finished uh, um, it, like, so I like to call it the Skullduggery series, but um, so it's sort of like a generational thing. <laughs> So yep. my next novel, Winter of Red, actually takes place in the next generation after Fantastic. Thomas Rushworth. And oh, it takes good. place in the uh, the time of the English Civil War. Yeah. Um, and it's uh, it, it's um, interesting. Same types of <laughs> same, same type of uh, things that I like. You know, like there's the blood, the mystery, twists and turns. Yep. But this one is um, is a bit more of a journey. Very Once good. again, to be honest with you, before I before I started writing it, I didn't even realise that it was. But England was a republic. <laughs> um, so it takes place in that time when um, there, there was a war between the royalists and the uh, parliamentarians. Mm -hmm. England became a republic under Oliver Cromwell, and yeah. uh, but that, that's just sort of like the back backdrop. Yeah, it's more about the characters and the situations that, that they're in. And um, you know, love story developed, and yeah. But but it's awesome that you're putting it into authentic histories. Yeah. And I think for the for the historical fiction lovers, like I'm one of them, it really makes it so much more enjoyable because you can contrast, you understand pieces of those histories, you understand, or well, you can evolve to looking up more histories. So you can learn into it and go, oh wow, I did, you know, that's something you've given me to think about. I can look at it up as it was, but still have that credibility in the book and and, and enjoy that fictional part of it. It's the, the story of the characters. Yeah. So no, I, I, I think you've done a marvelous job and it's great that you, you know, can write that way for you know, authenticities. Um, so one question with that, having had now three books under your belt 
and as you say, there's a skullduggery potential, a potential skullduggery series. For our readers, would you say that you try to be original in each story or you're conscious about dropping in little red herrings and trying to bridge pieces for readers to enjoy? Don't give anything away. Just saying, no. do um, you feel that's something you do in the books? Or do you... put, put, put it this way. If you... Winter of Red being sort of like the next... And I don't want to talk too much about Winter of Red because we're here to talk about Skull Dugby. Yes. But Winter of Red is sort of like the, genera- the next generation. And yep. you could you could read Winter of Red without having read Skull Dugby. Yeah, but, of course. But certain things happen in Winter of Red yeah. But if you have Red Skull Duggery, you go, oh, yeah, yeah. So they do have subtle bridges and, yeah. and pieces in them. And that's yeah. that's fun, I think, for you too as a writer to yeah. know you're having linkage in your in your series yeah. or stories or even if they're one-offs, you still be able yeah. to put little, little things in there, which is wonderful. And, yeah, um, yeah that's right. You know, and we are here to talk about Skull Duggery, don't get me wrong, but all your, all your collective work is available for people to buy still, isn't it, I think, at the moment? Is yeah, it but, out yet or is it? Um, uh, Dream of Courage isn't No, uh, okay. So we're, um, yeah. that's, that's another conversation. That's right. That's fine. That's right. Okay, there's more books coming, people. Don't be worried. Um, but at the moment, we're talking about Skull Duggery, which is supported by Shoreline Publishing, because we so believe in Paul uh, as a talented Australian writer. He's done a marvellous job putting it all together. Um, and Paul, I, I thank you for your time. It's been wonderful talking to you. Um, and thank you, everyone, for watching sharing and of course buying and supporting Paul in his endeavour to become uh, well established and I believe he will achieve that goal. Um, Australian author thank you for your time, thank you Paul Thanks Bradley and uh, we'll yeah see you all again and talk to you soon <laughs>